So today we'll be uh, doing a demo on how to create an operator using Go programming language and operator SDK. We'll set up an environment uh, and implement a basic operator using memcast uh, as an application and deploy it to OpenShift cluster. All of the codes and files uh, that I will be using part of the demo um, is available at, at the GitHub link in this screen. Operators can be built using Go, um, Ansible, or Helm. In this demo, we'll be using Go to implement our operator and Go programming language. So what does Operator SDK provides? Um, operator SDK is a framework that uses controller runtime library to make uh, writing operators easier. And it provides uh, quick tools uh, for scaffolding uh, and code generation to bootstrap a new project. It also provides high-level APIs and abstraction to communicate with uh, your Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster. Um, it also has extensions to cover you know, common operator use cases. And it also has quick tools to build uh, your image, push your image, and deploy it to, uh, to your, build your operator to OpenShift cluster. Before writing an operator, um, we need to have our environment set up. The following prerequisites that you see in the screen has to be installed uh, before you start writing an operator. You need Go, Golang, uh, because we'll be using the Opera SDK and Go programming language uh, to create the operator. We need customize to uh, manipulate and modify uh, YAML files um, on the fly. Uh, we need a uh, kubectl CLI or OpenShift CLI. Uh, and in this case, since we will be deploying to OpenShift cluster, uh, we'll be uh, using the OpenShift CLI, uh, OC as a short name. Uh, we need Docker to build the image. Um, we'll be using OpenShift cluster. Uh, I already have OpenShift cluster ready. Um, and you need a proper and adequate permissions in the cluster so that you can uh, run commands in your cluster. And you also need to install uh, Opera SDK so that uh, you can you know, initialize your project and then uh, create APIs and spec and then create, implement your operator. So let's create a directory called memcast operator and, uh, and let's initialize our project there. So in order to, in order to initialize our project, um, we need to run the operator SDK init command and we'll provide our domain and repo as a parameter. The domain flag is basically the unique, unique identifier for the operator. Uh, we also need to uh, properly set our Go modules uh, in one of the folder, uh, in one of the files, uh, go.mod, and also activate the uh, activate the Go module support by running uh, the export command for Go module. It will take a couple of minutes uh, to finish running this. So once um, the init command is run, we need to create an API and, and spec. So from the com uh, command line, we'll run this uh, create API command uh, and provide a group version uh, and kind as, as a parameter. Uh, along with that, we'll also have a controller and resource uh, parameter. Uh, the group flag basically defines an API group in Kubernetes. Uh, it is a collection of uh, related functionality. Each group has one or more versions. So we'll also supply a version uh, as a part of the parameter. Each API group version contains one or more API types called kinds. In our case, uh, we're gonna name it memcast. Uh, the control flag signifies that the SDK should uh, scaffold a control file where our main logic resides. And the resource flag signifies that the SDK should also scaffold the schema and other, other resources and configuration files. So let's run that command as well. So we're going to say a yes here. So once it's completed, we'll update the API. So uh, before updating the API, let's look at the files and folders that uh, it has generated. So let's look at the project it created uh, after running the initialize command and the create API command. It has default files with default configuration. You can see that the API has been created uh, in file called memcast underscore types dot go. Um, it also has other configuration files, the default configuration files. 
it also has created uh, the controller file where our main logic resides. And the main.go file is, is initialized the main controller file. Um, and you'll see that there's a make file where it provides uh, different commands to build, uh, push, and deploy your operator. So now let's create an API and uh, and custom controller for Memcast operator. Oh, sorry. I, I think I think we should cut this down. Um, this different one. Starting again. Let's update the API as per our need. The API is defined as a Go struct uh, in Memcast spec. Uh, and memcat status, status. So modify the spec and status to include the size, uh, which is the integer, and it, it it resembles the number of replicas that you'll be installing, you'll be deploying in your OpenSea cluster. And in your memcat status struct, uh, we'll be adding node. Uh, it's, it's an array of string, and it defines each node uh, with their state. So we need to modify the existing default uh, parameters uh, according to our, our needs, which will be the size. And in the status, we'll be adding the nodes as a string. So now the next step is to implement the controller. The file that it, uh, that the operator SDK generated, which is inside the controllers folder, uh, memcast underscore controller dot go, uh, it has a reconcile method. So the reconcile method gets called every time you know the desired state doesn't match the actual state. So to implement the reconcile logic, we need to implement the following. We need to first uh, make sure uh, we get the memcast instance and we will create the deployment if it doesn't exist. Uh, the deployment will basically deploy uh, the memcast uh, image uh, into the cluster. Uh, we need to make sure uh, the actual and desired state match. And at the end, we'll update the memcast pod names with, uh, with their status. So let's go into the code and change that. So this is the memcast underscore controller file and it has reconcile method. And this is where the, all the logic resides. So here we'll be implementing uh, all those five steps uh, that I had mentioned earlier. Uh, I'm going to copy uh, already written code uh, into, into the reconcile method, which does those five steps. Sorry, I'm jumping here and there to find the problem. Okay. So now in the reconcile method, you can see that you know all, all the uh, code has been uh, pasted here. Uh, the first step is to get the main class instance. Um, the second step actually creates the deployment if it is already not created. Um, the function deployment for method deployment for memcast actually creates the deployment. Uh, for memcast, um, and we are using the memcast image with version 1.4.36 alpine uh, as a version. Next step is to make sure in the actual state and desired state are the same, and the other steps includes you know updating the the, the status with pod names and their state. So once this is done, you have written your basic uh, memcast operator to uh, to deploy the memcast operator into into the cluster. So 
So now, once you're ready, uh, the next step is to compile, build, and deploy your cluster. Uh, you need to run a set of commands uh, that the Opera SDK provides uh, to basically generate the code, uh, uh, make sure it compiles, and then uh, you also need to make sure that you have a proper namespace and image uh, set into your configuration files, and, and build, push, and deploy your operator. So we need to run make generate and make manifest and make install command to basically generate the CRDs based on the, the API changes that you made earlier. Um, we added like uh, size in, in the spec and you know the, all the nodes uh, with the names and uh, status state into, into the status. So we need to generate the CRD for, for that one. So we need to run make generate and make manifest command and make install basically compiles the code and make sure it's running. And the customize command basically customizes the YAML file, the configuration files uh, on the fly. So we will be editing uh, editing the namespace and putting our proper namespace in there. And also uh, setting the proper image name uh, inside the configuration files. So all of these command, uh, we can uh, put it into a script and then run it all together. So let me show you the script as a whole. Pausing for a while, starting again. Okay, the, the script as a whole uh, looks like this on the screen. Um, you need to set your proper image here. Uh, that's my image where uh, the operator will be hosted. Um, and this is the namespace. The namespace comes from uh, OpenShift cluster. It's, it's a name of the project that you'll be using uh, to deploy your operator. And all the rest of the commands are here um, once this is done um, the the operator will be deployed and next step is to basically change your custom resource instance provide the values and deploy your operand so let's run this script So while this is running, before you uh, run this command, you also need to log into your cluster. So if you go to your cluster, if you go to your cluster and open OpenShift uh, Web Console, uh, there's a copy command. Once you click that command, you'll get a token, and you can copy and uh, log in into, into your cluster uh, using this copy, uh, OC login command, and you'll be logged into your cluster. So before running the build, build script, you need to log into your cluster. So as you can see here, all the commands um, and all the statements in the scripts uh, are running fine. Um, looks like the script did finish. Um, at this point, um, the the operator the operator controller has been deployed. So manager control has been deployed. So let's look at that by running command OC get parts. So you can see that the memcast operator controller manager is is running fine. So next step is to um, deploy your operands. To do that, you need to change your custom resource instance and based on your API, provide the spec and and, and the integer value can, uh, depends on what you what you want, uh, not the number of instances that you want to deploy into your cluster. 
So let's make a change to our CR instance. So the CR instance lives in samples, uh, cast view and alpha one namecast.yaml. So since this is the default value, we need to remove that, provide the size. This, let's make it three for now. And in order to deploy the, uh, the operands, uh, we can apply this file into our cluster by running command. So now uh, let's make sure that our uh, operand has been deployed. So since we have uh, provided three, uh, three as, a, as a parameter uh, in our API, uh, there are three replicas running uh, here. Um, we also can you know, check, check this uh, and verify this from our OpenSea cluster as well. So uh, let's go to our project. The project name that I have used is Sanjeev-Demo. And you can see there are uh, two deployments running. Uh, let's see the memcast sample. And you can see that there are three parts running. The other things to test here is how to scale or descale your instances. Um, there are two ways, uh, and there's only one way to do properly. Uh, you can increase or decrease from here. It will scale to three, it's scaled to four, but this is not the right way, right? Because the the desired state is defined in the custom resource instance, which is three in our case, right? So since even though we increase this uh, uh, from here, from the OpenSea console to four, um, and it, it realizes that you know the actual and desired state is not matching. So the number of instances will go back to three at some point. It will take some time to decrease the number of parts back to three. So this is going to take some time. So I'm going to pause for a while. So as you can see that the, the number of parts has has uh, been back to decrease to three, uh, because uh, you know it, the cluster realizes that you know the actual state is uh, the desired state is basically three, which is defined in the custom resource, right? So, so if you really want to you know scale or descale the the number of instances, what you can do is you can modify your custom resources. Let's say let's put it back to four, and then we can apply this to our command line. And now the, the desired state is four, right? The size is four. So that means your, your operator looks at, uh, looks, at, looks at your CR instance and then it runs the reconcile method to redeploy the, the remaining instances, which is four. So pausing for now, this is also gonna take some time to you know, bring that fourth one, fourth part one. Okay, the fourth fourth part has already been um, been deployed. Let's also make sure the, the cluster is showing uh, the fourth part as well. So as you can see that the fourth part or uh, four instance has been deployed. 